Hello and welcome to Fortress Alaska. I'm your host Dave and today it's time for another book review. It's almost winter now and weather's been bad so I've been doing a lot more reading. I don't read a lot in the summer. I've got too many other things to do. Alaska summers are short. I have to enjoy them. Anyway, so the book review today is The Assault Platoon of the Grenadier Company, November 1944. The German Army Pamphlet in, in both German and English. And it is by Bernard Cast and Christopher Bergs. And you may recall, I did do a preview of this book telling you that I got it and I was looking forward to reading it. I finished another book, which you saw the review for earlier, and then I read this one. This is a simple evening's read. Mind you, half of it is in English and half is in German, so you're only really reading half the book. Uh, and it's relatively short. It's a German army, German army pamphlet. It's not a novel. So anyways, first of all, I'd like to say I highly recommend the book. We'll get right into that. And that you can still find it online. It is not available on Amazon anymore. And it costs about 50 bucks. So if you're a military historian or someone who just likes the history and know what really happened, what the troops were really supposed to do once they introduced the STG-44, then this is a good book to get. So let's talk about it a little. First of all, they give you nice diagrams of how things are supposed to be organized. I would like, and, they, and I would like to point out that this symbol here is the symbol for a horse. So... Even in 1944, the Germans were still dependent on horses to pull their carts and wagons. Um, that's not like it's a special unit type thing that, you know, you might need a horse or two here. No, it was actually their standard operating procedure for the Grenadier Company to have at least three horses. So, it's 1944. This should have been beyond horses at that point in time. But anyways, uh, the book also talks, tells you the who, what, where, when, why, and how of things. Uh, the Germans do it in a different order than we do, uh, but it is basically just to who, what, where, where, who, what, where, when, and why. Um, they talk about uh, the Sturmgewehr being particularly suitable for nighttime attacks because of its high rate of fire, uh, which I can agree with. They also talk about the cleaning and maintenance of the STG-44 and one humorous thing here is it specifically says to remove any hardened residue with a wooden spatula and that is an exact translation so I'm not sure if wooden spatula has a different meaning in German than it does in English but I just found it funny but that's an exact translation of the German words to English wooden spatula um, they talk about the training and how to train using the STG 44 Here's a little translation error or disagreement I have is they talk about lying down with your weapon. In American English, we would say going prone, not lying down. Uh, so just a small thing there. They talk about the fire training with the STG-44 and basically how to train the troops using it. Um, They show the proper way to hold the gun in various situations. They also show several diagrams of different ways to hold it depending on what you're doing. Now I would like to note that every instance I hear people who fire an STG-44, they always talk about how hot the handguard gets. But I've noticed in all their instructions of how to hold an STG-44, almost never do you see the hand on the handguard. You see it in front of the magazine well, behind the magazine well, on the magazine well, but never on the handguard. So uh, it's a little bit different thing there. The only time you see anything on the handguard in these diagrams or pictures is if he should just be resting it on his thumb while it's pressed against the wall or tree or something similar like that. So I don't think they considered the hot handguard an issue. Um, another small issue in translation um, they talk about the sight radius and the axis of the bore are further apart in the STG-44. Well, the right English word or the proper English word should be farther apart, not further. Farther denotes distance. Further is like you further a concept, further develop something, but farther is actual distance. So just a translation error there. But I don't blame them because most Americans get that wrong too. Now when you looked at that diagram earlier and it had all those symbols on it, they are nice enough to give you what all those symbols mean so that you can understand what they're saying because obviously very few of us have any uh, background in that. Uh, they also give you information 
for reading the maps that they show. There's various maps in the book for diagrams and training, and they give you what the symbols mean. They have a nice glossary, which defines a lot of the terms used in the book. So if you shouldn't understand anything, you can flip back to the glossary and find out what it is. It's actually a rather substantial glossary. Um, and then one of the disagreements, another translation disagreement, I should say, is they define sight radius as the sight radius is the imaginary line that runs from the eye over the rear sight through the front sight and to the target. Well, in English, I think we would call that the line of sight. Maybe there's not exact translation for English, but sight radius in American English for shooters is really just the distance between the rear sight and the front sight. So a little bit of disagreement there. That may be a little translation. Uh, it's slightly off, and there might not actually be a good translation to English. We might not actually have a word that really means what they're trying to convey there. I think line of sight would have been a better translation than sight radius. Uh, the book also talks about Hitler's rejection of the idea of the MP44 and how it finally got adopted. And finally, it will give you a nice uh, diagram of all the parts in both English and German. So that's, I actually like that because it's nice to learn what the parts were called and to see how the Germans have one word where we have three or, you know, vice versa. So uh, I think it's a very good book. I would highly recommend it if you're a history person. It's really nice to read what the troops were really supposed to be doing and how they were supposed to operate not just read the overall, you know, how many troops were there, who won the battle, how many people died, how many wounded, expenditures of ammo. Uh, you know, that's one thing. But this is what they were really supposed to be doing once they introduced the STG-44 to the troops, how they trained them, and what the troops were supposed to be doing. Uh, so I highly recommend the book. I think I've said that too many times now. Once again, as I said, it's not available on Amazon anymore, but you can find it online. It goes for about 50 bucks plus shipping. So... It's, it is a worthwhile investment, I would say. So once again, thank you for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Please share if you want. Also, I have a Patreon account, and I also have a Facebook page. The Facebook page shows future projects I'm working on so that you know what's coming up, and you, know, you can look for them to come out. And they tend to be a month or so out. I, I try to keep about a month or so going in front of me. Anyways, uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to say I hope you have a good day, and as usual, Try to get out and go shooting.